The manual is one of those special moves in mountain biking that once mastered can make beautiful moments. When done well, it looks incredible. However, it comes with a lot of cost in terms of energy and time to learn. You don't get to put this move in your skill set without spending some serious time trying to master it. What does the manual do? The manual is when you hold the front wheel clear of the ground using weight distribution and subtle body movements. Importantly, the manual is unlike the more traditional wheelie, which is held in position, the front wheel being off the ground, by pedaling and powering the front end high. However, the wheelie does have some similarity to the manual because both moves are controlled by subtle modulation of the rear brake. In short, the manual allows the rider to hold the front wheel high above terrain that could either ruin the flow of the ride or slow the rider down. The lower body and legs have to work very hard to maintain this mono wheel balancing act through the chosen section. How useful is the manual? How does it pay off? The use in the manual is twofold. It can be a display of skill on the trail, offering lots of options in terms of expression, adding amazing variety to jumps, tricks and flow on the trail. The manual is also a vital skill to negotiating obstacles on the trail. It helps the rider maintain momentum through rollers, routes and rocky sections. It is an incredible asset to have in your arsenal. It can be transformational to your riding ability, but it is hard earned. Well, how does it impact your riding? Once mastered, the manual gives a rider a huge amount of confidence to commit to a high pace through the trail. As rough sections or pump style obstacles approach, the manual allows the rider to relax through the riding section, holding the front high. It is really the confident aspects of this that start to impact the rider's skill set. It can almost feel like a get out of jail free card. In terms of expression, there are millions of examples on Instagram of riders making something more of a trail feature by utilising the manual. Just use the hashtag Manual Monday on Instagram and see how many examples you get. Where should you put it in your skill set? Within your skill set, the manual should and would rank very, very high. It isn't a skill that is crucial in a sense that you could ride mountain biking for 40 years and never master a manual and have a perfectly brilliant riding experience and ride almost any trail the everyday rider would choose to ride within reason a black diamond is likely going to ask for some manual mastery. So it isn't essential but the growth it realises for you once it is mastered is massive. In terms of desirability it's really hard to beat. There is almost zero mountain bikers who don't appreciate a well-executed manual. So, is everybody learning it? In the early days of mountain biking, the manual would have been regarded as a BMX wizardry move, a skill that would never be needed for high-speed mountain biking. As the sport developed and the disciplines evolved, the manual started to find its adoption in downhill racing. The top downhill racers looked to motocross for inspiration in terms of attitude, fashion and riding skills. The image of top supercross riders exiting a corner and holding the front end high through a set of whoops is where the imagination starts to spark on what the top downhill guys and girls were trying to emulate. These days, the manual is essential to maintaining high speed through tough trails. Features within trails are even designed to make the most of manuals. Not only does it get extensively used in slope style, downhill, dirt jump and enduro, it is even a skill that super fast cross country riders are starting to put into their trick bag. If they're using it, you need it. What makes the manual so original? There is no underestimating the utility of the manual. It opens the door to so much more speed, variety, and most importantly, confidence. There really isn't another skill that can transform your riding so much, but at the same time, isn't essential. Something of a paradox. But there you have it. You don't need it, but man, you need it. Who originated the move? In short, the manual probably starts in skate parks and swimming pool riding on skateboards. Then later on the similar move 
uh, it's adopted by BMXers as they try to utilize the parks and bowls themselves, just like the bunny hop. Let's face it, the wheelie has been in the ambition of a cyclist from the word dot. Once the wheelie was mastered, then I guess the manual was very close, but it took inspiration from these other sports to really open the cyclist's eyes to what could be possible from the manual. Who are the champions of manualing? Who's using it? In terms of races, well, in downhill, everyone is using it, everyone. You can't really be really, really fast without this in modern tracks and the modern pace, which is very high. In slope style, it's likely every rider has a very good mastery of the manual, just simply because the level of riding ability needed in slope style means that the learning curve would almost certainly have included manuals. The slope style riders love style and fun. Nothing is more stylish and fun than the manual. Specific riders who make great use of the manual and could be regarded as a champion of the move. Windmasters, he's something of an exponent. Jack Moyer, um, he's a very rapid rider and he puts it to great use, of course. As a curveball, we'd have to point towards the street trial movement for a very skillful and controlled use of the manual. So riders like Danny McCaskill, Fabio Widmer would be obvious names who put the move to great use. For a rider who makes a manual look like art, the best use case example, check out Brandon Seminex's edits if you haven't seen them. They're full of them and it looks amazing. So is the manual sticking around? Is it worth learning? The manual opens doors to so many other moves and skills. It adds depth to creative riders' options. Once learned, there's no downside, only potential. It's that simple. As mentioned at the top of the show, it isn't an essential move. You can mountain bike without the manual, you really can. So that means it could be argued that the learning time isn't worth it because it does take a ton of time and dedication to learn a good manual. However, it cannot be overrated in terms of what the manual can do for your riding once you have learned it. Plus, as you learn it, you get serious gains right away. The moment a rider starts to get more comfortable with lifting the front end with body weight alone, you immediately start to see spots on the trail where you can use it. Once again, in summary, it isn't essential, but it is a very important and very worthwhile prize for those who master it. If you want to learn the manual, then click the link above to get started. Let us know in the comments what you would like to see some analysis on next, a move, a skill, maybe a, a ride or an event. Until then, it's goodbye from me, but make sure you share and uh, give us lots of love on social media and don't forget to subscribe to GMBN.